My God, this video is confusing. Fire. Romans. Knights. Nazis. Dogs. What does it all mean? Rammstein. What's your point? All right, welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about Rammstein's Deutschland. So the video has been out for more than two years now, but there's still some controversy about the major motifs of the video. Rammstein's video is actually not so much a music video, but rather a summary of German history that tries to answer the questions of why we are, where we are, and why we are, who we are. All right, so before the video came out, there was a small teaser, which lasted only 10 seconds, and it showed the band members in a concentration camp, and they were about to be hanged. Of course, this sparked a major controversy in the German press. The German media went nuts. Of course, that was a well-calculated provocation on the side of the band, and everyone fell for it. When the actual video came out, though, it became clear that it was not that easy. So, Rammstein have always been trying to provoke some controversy with their videos, and usually all the critics have been more than eager to take the bait. Anyway, in this video, I want to shed some lights on the major motifs of Rammstein's Deutschland, and of course, it's good to start with some questions before I actually walk you through the video. Now the questions I want to answer in this video are why does Rammstein's Deutschland seem to be revolving around the motif of two? The next question is why is Germania, the main protagonist of the video, evil? The third question, what does the eye patch mean as a recurring theme? And the last question, what about those dogs that keep reappearing during the video? Now to get this brief analysis started, I first want to talk about Germania itself. What does it mean? I just said that the main protagonist, the woman, is Germania. Then of course Germania used to be a region which was defined by the Romans. So it was those savage regions that resisted being Romanized. Of course, Germania in itself is also a metaphor. So in this metaphor, many motifs and themes meet. On one hand, it's the central metaphor of Rammstein's video. Then, of course, Germania, as we see it now, is related to Germany, to the modern Germany of today. Then also, it kind of mirrors the whole undertaking of the Roman conquest. Also, the Roman historian Tacitus wrote a work which was called Germania, in which he tried to emphasize how the savage cultures of Germanic peoples are actually superior to the Roman Empire. And then, very importantly, Germania is also a play by East German playwright Heiner Müller, which is called Germania Tod in Berlin, Germania's death in Berlin. So the whole Germania metaphor takes us from antiquity to modernity, to, so to say. So first of all, Germania herself was a heroic figure in medieval German mythology. Right here we see an illustration from the year 1010, and as we can see, the picture is divided into two halves, like the first part, the above half shows some saint-like figures, and the lower half shows Germania, and looking at her posture, we can say that she is compared to those saints above. So she's almost like a Christ-like figure herself. The next image is from the 19th century, so it was painted during German Romanticism. And now we see Germania is kind of in a very depressed state. So she's leaning against a tree, her sword is not raised, and she's holding a shield. Basically, this is still the aftermath of the French occupation of Germany and the loss of German culture and the end of the Holy Roman Empire. Then. In 1848, now we have Germania in this black and white illustration, and she's sitting on her throne, so to say, and she's holding a text which says Grundgesetz des Deutschen Volkes, which means the constitution of the German people. And then here, 1848, we have a revolutionary pose, and Germania, she's shown in front of the German flag, and she's holding her sword. Now, this was like a very, very brief period of revolution in Germany, where students actually try to instate a kind of a German democratic government. Of course, it failed. And then from 1860, we have Germania, and she's basically leaning on her sword, and it's called Wacht am Rhein, so she's keeping watch there. So again, she is in a heroic pose here. Germany is east of the Rhine, and now she's like keeping watch there, of course, watching closely that the French won't attack again and defeat German culture once again. And then from 1914, that's when World War I broke out. So we have Germania as a warrior goddess. So she's holding up her shield. In the right hand, she's holding a sword, ready to strike. And then we see 
see like her hair is very long golden blonde so basically she's carrying all the features of a germanic hero so to say and of course there's not only paintings there's also statues like this one so she's holding a crown in her hand which basically makes her the empress of the holy roman empire of german nations which of course has ceased to exist but with the second german empire feelings of reinstating that holy roman empires were pretty widespread among germans at that time this is going to be very important because in rammstein's video we will have germania constantly holding the head of armenia's in her hand so the crown is being exchanged with a human head and this human head also used to belong to the proto hero of german history now this one is going to be very important because this is basically how rammstein's video starts off so you have a figure leaning over germania and basically it's arminius the hero and he is trying to free germania so he's got the knife in his hands it's from 1818 and rammstein's video kind of like turns this whole situation around by making arminius the figure that's lying helplessly on the ground and germania trying to rescue him but in the end she's not going to rescue him she's actually going to cut his head off so it's a reversal of the whole situation so i mentioned tacitus germania tacitus basically used the germanic tribes and their culture to hold up the mirror to the romans and their lascivious cultureless way of life as tacitus saw it especially Especially when it comes to the way of life of Roman women, Tacitus uses Germanic women to conjure up the image of a more ideal and moral lifestyle. So he basically presents the old Germans as noble savages whose culture is still intact, unlike the Roman culture, which had already been corrupted by luxury, laziness, and all the evils of civilization. So anyway, he says like those savage tribes of the Germans are morally superior because they have not been civilized yet. So civilization itself is kind of an evil in Tacitus' view. Now, as for Heiner Müller's Germania, it's very significant because Heiner Müller, although he was an East German writer and poet and an ardent communist too, he was obsessed with German history. And so basically, the way he defined German history is crucial for the understanding of Rammstein's video because Rammstein's video relates to Heiner Müller's definition of German history and culture and the main conflict at its core. So basically, Heiner Müller said, like, from the beginning to modern German culture, everything can be traced back to the brother conflict. What Heiner Müller says is, it's the old German brother conflict all over again. The war between brothers, between relatives, is a major theme in German literature. It begins in Tacitus with Arminius standing on one side of the river and his brother on the other side with the Romans. His brother tries to convince Arminius that the Romans are the best chance for Germany and for civilization. Why fight them? But Arminius denounces him as a slave of the Romans. They start quarreling and throw spears at each other. That's how it all began, an old German situation. And as we will see in a minute, this is exactly where Rammstein's video starts. In Rammstein's video, there are four major characters. Of course, number one is Germania herself. Then we have Arminius and his brother Flavus. And then we have the dogs. And we can see all these characters in different situations, but these situations all mirror the same dilemma, which is, again, these two brothers fighting. So going back to Heiner Müller, the brother conflict is at the core of the video. And these scenes that have the brother conflict as a common theme are antiquity, Roman conquest, Arminius versus Flavus. Then we jump to the 1920s, where it's Nazis against communists. Then we have the 1920s again, it's the Weimar Republic, again Nazis fighting communists, right-wingers fighting left-wingers, and we have this boxing match, and we have the fight going on between the two men with very interesting details in the background. Then we have Nazis against Jews, and then we have West Germany against East Germany, the Federal Republic of Germany versus the German Democratic Republic, and then we have the rogue leftist thugs of the RAF against the German legal system. So we always have these two forces competing with each other and fighting with each other. So Heiner Müller's Germania and Rammstein's video are structurally very, very similar. So basically we have 13 historical scenes and then we have this brother conflict which is conjugated through these scenes just as Heiner Müller's Germania. So let's begin the analysis of the video. In the beginning it says Germania Magna 16 AD. Basically the Romans had already been defeated by the Germans in the year 
8 AD. But the year 16 AD is significant because it marks the death of Arminius at the hand of his relatives, in this case his brother. So we have Flavus moving in with the Roman army and Arminius is on the other side of the river. So then again we have this division, Arminius on one side and his brother on the other side. That's the beginning of the brother conflict. Very significantly, Flavus has a bandage across his eye because he lost his eye in a battle. This is going to be very important in the rest of the video because we can identify Flavus as the antagonist of the hero Arminius by looking at his eye patch. So it's not going to be the same guy, but it's the same principle at work. So it's an antagonistic principle that is working against the hero principle. Right. So in the beginning of the video, there's a mysterious island with a laser beam on there. This laser beam marks the position of Arminius. And then we have Roman soldiers sneaking up on this island and that laser beam. They're basically trying to assassinate Arminius. Among them is a strange figure with a bandaged face. This, of course, is Flavus. It's the brother of Arminius, who most likely lost his eye in battle. And then the Romans see a mysterious figure, which is Germania, in a cloak and she's cutting off Arminius's head. And here we come back to the reversal of the motif of Arminius actually saving Germania, but now he becomes the victim of Germania, and as she cuts off his head, she also takes possession of his head, which of course also means that instead of her taking the crown of Germany, she's decapitating and incapacitating Germany this way. So we see a couple of scenes like astronauts, and then we see the band basically walking through fire, and then we see Germania as a kind of war warrior princess, and this of course resembles that Germania pose again. Then after that medieval scene of a number of knights being killed while Germania herself is surviving, we cut to the 1920s where there's two men fighting each other in kind of a boxing match. Now this scene is very important because it takes place in Weimar Germany where the two major forces of right-wing ideology and left-wing ideology were fighting each other, and we can see that there's a referee in the background who has all the characteristics of Lenin, which of course symbolizes the communist ideology ideology that was spreading during the 1920s. On the other hand, of course, we have the Nazi ideology that was also spreading during the 1920s. And don't forget, there's also Josephine Baker in this video. She used to be a famous dancer and jazz singer in the 1920s in Berlin. So we have these two principles fighting each other. Again, it symbolizes the whole brother conflict. So it's basically two versions of the same thing going at each other. And then just to incorporate the Nazi side of things, we see the band walking towards a camera. And in the background, we see the Hindenburg going up in flames, which happened in 1937 in New Jersey. There's obviously a German obsession with fire there. Maybe it's not only starting fires locally, but setting the whole world on fire. When it comes to German history, there seems to be a very strange mix of catharsis through fire and destruction. And when the vocals start and we go back to the 1920s, then from the fight of the two brothers, the video cuts to a scene which is inside of an office of the Communist Party of East Germany. And in this office, the members of the Politburo are drinking champagne and indulging in luxury, which of course was something that the common East German could only dream of. What's very interesting is we have the singer of the band as Erich Honecker, who used to be the chairman of the Communist Party of East Germany. And then we have Germania there too, in a kind of communist uniform, smoking a cigarette. Basically in the same scene, we have two members of the communist party kissing each other, which is of course a representation of the communist brother kiss, the most famous one definitely being Brezhnev and Honecker. Now that's the most famous image of a brother kiss ever. And then the video introduces the motif of the dogs. First is Germania walking a pack of German shepherds and in the background there's like a SWAT team. After that there's a scene where monks are feasting on Germania's body, which of course is a satirical way of presenting Holy Communion because now they're not consuming the body of Christ but they're eating Germania's body. So they're exchanging the official God with Germania. And that's not all because the fact that the Germans actually spread Catholicism across Europe is very important in this context context too. And now the Germans who helped instate it are actually turning against it. And then we have the most famous scene of the video. It shows the band members who are about to be hanged in a concentration camp. And what's very significant is while they're waiting to be executed, there's V2 rockets being launched in the background. V2 also represents the two fighting elements, the two fighting forces. We have V1 rockets and V2 rockets, of course. And what's also important in this scene is we have German is kind of like an SS officer and she's wearing an eye patch, which of course also represents this evil principle of Flavus. 
And then we have this strange nativity scene where Germania appears as a Madonna-like figure and she's giving birth, but she's not giving birth to the savior, she's giving birth to dogs. And these dogs are a very crucial motif because it becomes obvious they're not German shepherds. No, they are a so-called Pominadenmischung. Now this theme of mongrels is very important because it can be traced back to a poem by Kurt Tucholsky and this poem is called Ola German which means old Germans and in this poem he describes Germans as mongrels and the most important part is this one where Tucholsky writes Wir waren unsere Ahnen kaschubische Germanen die zeugten zur Erfrischung eine Promenadenmischung and this Promenadenmischung that's what these dogs are in the video they are mongrels Promenadenmischung means mongrel dogs and so basically Rammstein are alluding to Tucholsky's poem and the fact that Germans are not pure as symbolized by the German shepherds but they're actually a mix of different races well I think Tucholsky he's got a point here he's not wrong about this now it seems like Hitler knew Tucholsky's poem and he hated it because it kind of undermined his whole ideology. So the video kind of ends with Germania being shown in different poses and different clothing representing the different stages of German history. Of course the question is why did Rammstein choose a black actress for their video? Now this can be seen as an allusion to the play Medea by Hans Henian, a very important German writer of the 1920s. Hans Henian chose a black Medea because he wanted to emphasize the element of being exotic and foreign. And here, Rammstein again comes back to Heiner Müller too. Because Heiner Müller, who grew up during the reign of the Nazis, said he felt as exotic as a black person in Germany during the reign of the Nazis. Another possible explanation is that Rammstein just wanted to play with the idea of Germania not being Germanic. So this could also be a reason just to make it more provocative. But Germania also appears in a parody by Heinrich Heine, who wrote about the legend legendary King Barbarossa, that he will rise again and punish all the murderers of the Virgin Germania. So what Heine writes is, Der Kaiser hält ein strenges Gericht, er will die Mörder bestrafen, die Mörder, die gemeuchelt einst, die teure, wundersame, goldlockige Jungfrau Germania. Here we have it again, the Virgin Germania with her golden locks, like in the 1918 illustration that I showed at the beginning of this video. So in the end we can say Rammstein's video is a very intricate mix of different motifs that are important for the way Germany evolved during the course of history. Of course there's a lot of artistic freedom involved here because Rammstein did not give an actual representation of historical facts, but basically a version that analyzes and highlights the dilemma of German identity itself because we can see we have competing principles at work here that tend to sabotage Germany's process of civilization. So in the end it comes back to the brother motif and all the ways that this conflict has been influencing the progress of Germany in negative ways. So it's a very complex video that shows that German history cannot be reduced to one historical period but that historical reality is much more difficult than that. So thank you very much for watching. There's more videos to come. See you next time and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.